I've been tired and I need to fix that. There's only one way I can think of to get me off my ass. By making adrenaline, of course. Adrenaline plays an essential role in the fight or flight response. By increasing blood flow to the muscles, heart output, pupil dilation response, blood sugar level, and even video output. That sounds like something I need. As a medication, it is used to treat several conditions, including allergic reaction anaphylaxis, cardiac arrest, and lazy YouTuber syndrome. I know several people who could use that. Perhaps this will help them get their much needed fix. So to get started with the synthesis, I set up a stir plate and a flask in a water bath. I add some cooling packs and ice to prevent the reaction from going out of control. I then add 100 mL of 1,2-dichloroethane as a solvent and 30 grams of aluminum chloride as the catalyst. Then as the first reagent, I add 10 grams of catechol. Then as the second reagent, I gradually pipette a total of 7 mL of chloroacetochloride into the flask. Now that all of the reagents have been added, I leave it to stir for a few minutes in the ice bath and then let it stir for 20 hours at room temperature. This reaction is a typical fetal crafts acylation, where aluminum chloride catalyzes the reaction between catechol and chloroacetochloride to form 4-chloroacetocatechol. In more detail, aluminum chloride first coordinates to the acid chloride chlorine, causing both to be kicked off. The resulting intermediate is an acelium ion, which is resonance stabilized. The acelium ion carbon is attacked by the aromatic ring of catechol, forming an intermediate. This intermediate is deprotonated by the tetrachloroaluminate ion to form hydrogen chloride, restore the aluminum chloride catalyst, and the aromatic ring. We are then left with the final product, 4-chloroacetocatechol, or also called 2-chloro-3'-4'-dihydroxyacetophenone. The product can also form a complex with aluminum chloride, which can be destroyed afterward, by adding water. When I came back, it had stopped stirring, and it became mushy. So, I hope the reaction has at least gone to completion. Now to destroy all of the aluminum chloride, and any complexes, I gradually add an excess of 10% hydrochloric acid. At first it just sits on top, so I have to mix it in, and quickly an exotherm takes place. That boils off a bunch of 1,2-dichloroethane and expels some hydrochloric acid. It is best to do this slowly in an ice bath, to keep the temperature down, but I'm too impatient for that. So I just keep adding it and mixing it in, and when it no longer seems to react, I add a bunch more on top. The mixture has turned pink, and I move it all to a beaker. I wash out the flask with more acid, and then let the mixture stir for a few hours to make sure everything has reacted. I then vacuum filter it all through a glass frit to collect the pink solid and wash it with some water. I then scrape off all of the solid from the filter and move it to a beaker. Now, the product isn't supposed to be a Barbie ad, so I will Oppenheimer it a bit before moving on to the next step. So I add a bunch of 10% acetic acid and heat it to dissolve everything. When that happens, it becomes clear and the pink color has disappeared. Then to this hot solution, I add some activated carbon which will hold on to some of the impurities. I let it stir for a few minutes, though it's best to do it a bit longer. But again, impatience. I then just filter it through the same filter, because I don't feel like cleaning that. And the filter looks the same. I then let it sit in the fridge overnight, and a bunch of solid has crystallized out. I decant off all of the liquid, and wash the solid with some water, to get rid of the acid. I then move the flask with a wet slushy solid to an ice water bath, and use it like this for the next reaction. To that, I add 60 ml of acetonitrile as a solvent. I then wait for it to dissolve and cool down to about 5C. When that happens, I gradually add 23 ml of a 40% methylamine solution, which is in excess. At first, nothing happens, but then a greenish precipitate suddenly forms. When all of it has been added, I move it out of the ice water bath and into a heating mantle. I then heat it to 35C and leave it to stir for 3 hours to make sure that the reaction is complete. In this reaction, the amine from Amine attacks the carbon adjacent to the chlorine, causing the chlorine to be kicked off. The resulting intermediate is deprotonated by another methylamine molecule, forming methylamine hydrochloride, and the product, adrenaline. At first, the reaction was green, and after a while it became yellow, and in the end, it was brown. I then move it to an ice water bath again, to cool it down, to a bit below room temperature, and add in some more acetonitrile. Since the product is insoluble in acetonitrile, I then vacuum filter the mixture through a glass fit with a filter paper on top and wash it with some more acetonitrile. The product has a dirty brown green color, so it has to be cleaned. So I move it all to a flask and let it stir in ethanol for an hour to dissolve most of the impurities. I then filter it through a glass fit again and wash it with some more ethanol. The color has become a lot better, so I will use it like this for the next step. I move it all to a flask again and add approximately 70 ml of methanol. I then blast the liquid with a stream of dry hydrogen chloride 
that is produced by reacting sulfuric acid and sodium chloride. In this reaction, the adrenaline is simply converted into its hydrochloride salt. When I turn off the stirring, we can more clearly see something is happening. And after it is all reacted, everything had dissolved, and the mixture is black. The product should precipitate out. So I add some isopropyl alcohol, just in case it is necessary. Since in the procedure, they used a solution of hydrogen chloride in the isopropyl alcohol, instead of blasting it with a stream of hydrogen chloride like I did. I also moved it to a fridge to cool down, and it quickly all crystallized out, to become this mush. I filter all of that, and wash it with a bunch of methanol, and it leaves behind an off-white solid, of adrenaline hydrochloride. But, I feel like a bunch of it dissolved away in the methanol. So I will first take the filtrate and boil off half of the solvent. I then put it in the freezer instead of the fridge at minus 25C. And a bunch more solid has crystallized out. I filter that as well and wash it with a bit of methanol. This part is a bit more colored than the other part, but it's not that bad. Now this solid is still a bit wet and I want to know the yield. So I move it all to a flask. I then heat it to 60C and pull a vacuum. I left it overnight and after that, it should have pulled out all of the solvent. The yield of the dry adrenaline hydrochloride turned out to be 5.5 grams, or 28%, which is lower than the combined yields of the procedures I was following, but that is pretty much expected. Now for the next reaction, I add a mixture of 43 mL of methanol and 13 mL of water as a solvent. I wait for it to dissolve, and then as the catalyst, I add 1 gram of 20% palladium hydroxide on carbon, which is the whole bottle. I then attach a two-way gas adapter, and on top, I attach a balloon filled with nitrogen, and on the side, a vacuum pump. I then remove all of the oxygen from the flask by pulling a vacuum, and then letting the nitrogen fill that vacuum. I do that a few times to make sure that pretty much all of the oxygen has been removed. I then replace a nitrogen balloon for a hydrogen balloon. I repeat the same steps to make sure that the flask is completely filled with hydrogen, and then leave the way to the hydrogen balloon open. I leave this to stir at 35C overnight. In this reaction, the palladium hydroxide on carbon catalyzes the hydrogenation of the ketone to an alcohol. The palladium hydroxide is loaded onto the carbon particles, which have a very large surface area. Thus there are a lot more places where the reaction can take place, which improves the reaction rate. In general, hydrogen first attaches to the palladium, after which the to be hydrogenated functional group can take up the attached hydrogens. In the end, the reaction consumed about one balloon full of hydrogen, and then repeat the same process as before, with a nitrogen balloon, to remove all the hydrogen, so that the catalyst won't spontaneously ignite. I then set it up for filtration, through three stacked filter papers, to make sure it filters out all of the carbon particles. At first, the filter is clear, but the product and impurities are sticking to the carbon. So I wash it with methanol, and the filter becomes red. Now we don't really want this red color, and in the procedure, they filter it through activated carbon cartridges, with quite a long contact time. I don't have those, so I will see if stirring it with activated carbon for a few hours will manage to remove it. When that is done, I pour it all into a beaker, and then filter it again and the filter comes out more orange than red. Well, at least it's no longer red. So that's an improvement. So I will just use it like this for the next step. So I add a stir bar again, and add an excess of 25% ammonia solution to convert the adrenaline hydrochloride into its free base, which is pretty insoluble in water. I also add some more water, since I used quite a lot of methanol before, and we see it gradually becomes more and more cloudy from the precipitating adrenaline. I left that to stir for a few hours. And when I came back, it had become brown, I move it to a beaker again and wash it out with some methanol. I then filter it all through a filter paper and let it dry on the filter for a few minutes. The residue is a dry, grayish cream colored solid, and I scrape it off the filter. Adrenaline is quite sensitive to oxidation from the air, and also through light, and it will relatively easily convert into adrenochrome, which has a purple color, which is why adrenaline discolors easily. The yield of racemic adrenaline turned out to be 4.1 grams, which is 88%, while theirs was only 64%. In the procedure they used regular palladium hydroxide, instead of on carbon like I used. So maybe that explains why my yield is better, since that massively increases the surface area. Or I just have a huge amount of impurities, who knows? The body naturally only uses one of the enantiomers, which is levoadrenaline. Thus the effect of dextroadrenaline on the body is about 15 times weaker than levoadrenaline. Therefore, when it's used in medicine, the amount of levoadrenaline is above 99%, while this one is only 50%. To increase the concentration of one of the enantiomers, they perform chiral resolution. But I'm not doing that. Bye.